Okay, so you might be wondering what these acronyms actually stand for. I mean, what is this WIE and WEP? Sounds something alien, right? Ah, just kidding. Let's move ahead and dig a bit into who we are. Women Engineers Pakistan, WEP, is a non-profitable organization spearheading a very strict mission to encourage female participation in STEM, leading to better integration within business and education in Pakistan and beyond. Our vision is to bridge the gender gap within STEM domains in Pakistan. Women in Engineering is actually the full form of acronym WIE. It's the largest international professional organization dedicated to promoting women engineers and scientists and inspiring girls around the world to follow their academic interest in a career in engineering and science. WIE NAST PNEC Student Chapter is a student branch of the global network under which we work to encourage females towards STEM. STEM, 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 oh, you all must be tired of listening to this buzzword STEM again and again. And the question must arise in your mind that what exactly is STEM? But before I answer your question, I would like to ask you the acronym for STEM. Quickly write your answer in the chat box that what does STEM stands for? Science, technology, engineering, mathematics. Very good, Myra. Shaw, science, technology, engineering, mathematics. Amazing, Wajiha, Fatma. Science, technology, engineering, mathematics, Abhya, science. That's amazing. Well, yes, you all are absolutely right. STEM is an acronym for science, technology, engineering, and mathematics. But it's more than that. STEM is an approach to education that focuses on sciences, develops critical thinking skills, and improves problem-solving activities to solve some of the world's greatest challenges. In traditional school system, where students are concentrated on learning subjects separately, like math, social studies, geography, science, English, and many others. STEM education emphasizes technology and integrates all the subjects in a way that connects classroom learning with the real world. The letter S in the word STEM stands for science. So what do you mean by word science? All right, all right. I, I know you're not little kids. You might already know what science is. But to give you a brief description, science is the study of nature. And to study the natural world around us, we require observations and experiments. Similarly, the letter T in STEM is for technology. Well, I'm not ashamed to accept that the kids these days are more into technology than even us. However, what's the definition of technology? Technology is the use of scientific knowledge for practical applications, whether in industry or in our day everyday lives. It contributes in making our lives easier and better. A quick example to this can be this online system, because of which it could be possible for us to gather such a large number of students from different cities of Pakistan and conduct this virtual session. Imagine how difficult it would be without this technology to arrange such a session during this pandemic situation. Oh God, it gives me goosebumps just to imagine a life without technology. You're absolutely right, Asha. It would be devastating. Well, moving further, the letter STEM stands for engineering, which is an application of science and mathematics by which the properties of matter and sources of energy in nature are made useful for people. But who is an engineer? Engineer is not an alien at all but a person who designs and builds complex products, machines, systems, and structures. You can find the wonders of engineers all around yourself, like smartphones, laptops, air conditioner, airplanes, robots, and huge buildings are all mesmerizing innovations of engineers. 
Before moving towards our last letter, M, I would like to ask you, what is your favorite subject in this school? Kindly use the chat box again to answer the question. What is your favorite subject in school? Physics, maths, physics, history, mathematics, chemistry, biology, physics, maths, maths, art, computer. Physics, maths, chemistry, science, computer, English, bio, chemistry, physics, all sciences. <laughs> That's great. <laughs> art. Math is dealing. I'm really surprised. Well, let's discover the logic and the beauty of maths. The complex questions you come across in maths that really frustrates you, like what is the value of x, but finding x actually develops logical thinking and decision making a skill to sharpen your mind. That's all about us and our favorite, Mr. Stem. Now, let's proceed to word engineering and its fields, for which I would like to hand it over to Hira. Assembly. Hira, I'm Am I sorry, audible? you're not audible. Yes, you are. Again, I can't hear you, Hira. All right, I hope I'm audible now. Yes, Assalamu alaikum everyone, and thank you Sovya and Aisha. I'm Hira Meeman, an electrical engineering student at NUSP and EC, and currently the vice chair of IEEE V and PSC. Let's quickly hop on to the next section, which is the engineering field. Here, we'll be discussing a few of the general engineering fields you can choose from and details regarding them. The entire world and different phenomena we take advantage of, remember, all of it revolves around energy. Engineering in a nutshell is just intelligent use of different forms of energies to solve real world problems. Well, I have a task for you guys. Quickly guess the names of engineering fields that come to your mind and type them in the comment box. I'll give you 10 seconds. There are more than 15 types. Yes, there are a lot of fields. Mechanical, wonderful. Electrical, yes. Software, very nice. Chemical, civil. You guys know a lot about it already. Yes, there are. Yeah. Wonderful. All right, so you guys have a really good idea now. Wow, space engineers, you guys are really next level. <laughs> so, well, the fields that I'll be discussing are mechanical, electrical, civil, aerospace, software, and chemical engineering. And there are few fields. There are a dozen of more fields, but let's keep our focus to the most common ones right now. We'll first go through their boring definitions, followed by some really juicy practical examples to get a clearer idea. So we can see these uh, change slides. So let's begin with what is mechanical engineering? It involves the production and usage of mechanical power for the design and production and operations of machines and tools. So you have power producing machines, any power banane wali machines hungi, like engines, turbines, garbage of generators, and power using machines, any wo machines to power ka small karti, just cars, ho gai, air conditioners, elevators, whatever. So mechanical engineers have expertise in designing and developing those aspects of these machines which involve uh, mechanical power. Next up, we have electrical engineering, the field that I have chosen. Uh, well, it involves invention, creation, and improvement of electronic devices, tools, and equipment. Microwave, TV, robots, even the laptop or mobile phone that you're using to attend this session is of electrical engineers, uh, electrical, uh, electrical engineering ki low voltage category. Did you all 
ever noticed those electrical uh, power poles on highways and really heavy powers on the uh, uh, wires on them? So electrical engineers deal with power distribution through these huge wires to your homes, smartly tackling different types of complex problems that may arise. Then we have civil engineering, which involves designing and building large infrastructure. From the house that you live in to the skyscrapers like Burj Khalifa in Dubai, civil engineers work towards the stability and robustness of such infrastructure. Next up, we have aerospace engineering, which involves all exciting aspects of designing flying machines. From radar communication of planes with ground to the aerodynamics, the scope is huge. Today, the technological uh, advancements are so that we have UAVs, they are called unmanned aerial vehicles. They are also available. They are flying machines which pilots remotely control karte hai, without being in that plane. How cool is that? No? Let's now talk about software engineering, <laughs> which involves designing and writing codes for computer or other electronic devices. I hope you all have used Microsoft Word or Paint or MS Teams, just for abhi our session conduct ho hai. These are programmed by software developers who propose and implement interesting features in these applications to satisfy the users like you and me. Software engineers are usually those people typing vigorously on the keyboards that you see in science fiction movies. The last ones in the list are capsule engineers who are experts in production and manufacture of products through chemical processes. These people are friends with, yeah, software engineers are so cool, right? These people are friends with chemistry, very deeply involved in refining and processing raw materials to make valuable products. Your medicines, fuel for your cars, textile, fertilizers, even our beloved chili mili. These are all very few of wonderful products that humanity achieved through chemical engineering. Before we move on to the next section, I hope you all have these six engineering fields that I explained clearly memorized. But I think you can do this machine because we're all going to enjoy some fun, fueled activities now. Every activity is bad. Uh, you can guess that this activity is bad. All right? So we are going to are you all ready to begin the next, the first activity? The first activity is the mini plane. I'm very self-explanatory, I guess. Then uh, quickly, please take out a paper and a scissor. So you need a paper and a scissor. And let me just open up a paper for you. I hope you all know how to make a paper plane, right? You guys know that, right? A kindly nod or something to to pata chale ke aata hai apne paper plane banana. Aata? Chale. If you know how to make a paper plane, so while listening to me, I will give you some extra information. Dungi. आप लोग पेपर प्लेन्स भी साथ-साथ बनाते हैं वरना नहीं तो मैं साथ-साथ बनाती भी जा रही हूं तो यू कैन लुक एट मी एज वेल तो सो वी कैन यू गो द नेक्स्ट एनिमेशन चलिए बिफोर वी बिगिन एंड यू कैन आल्सो फॉलो मी राइट सो बिफोर वी बिगिन आप लोगों में से जो भी प्लेन्स में ट्रैवल कर चुका है एंड गॉट लकी इनफ टू बी सीटेड नेक्स्ट टू द विंडो एंड अनलकी इनफ टू हैव देयर व्यू लाइक हिंडर्ड बाय द प्लेन विंग so you must have noticed some moving flaps on the wings. Again, maybe you get the next time, when you travel travel, try to observe those moving flaps. So your wing ke side per ek flap hota hai, you move kar process. So try to observe those. Abhi, I get anxiety attacks. I hate window seats. Oh my God, I love them. <laughs> so now we have the plane. Uh, can someone please type in the comment box if you are done making the plane, paper plane? Yep, 
डन ऑल राइट तो दैट लुक्स लाइक कि कुछ लोगों ने बना लिया है तो आई एम प्रीटी श्योर सब लोग कर सकते तो नाउ दैट आई हैव माय प्लेन मैं बातें करते करते प्लेन बना चुकी हूं तो नाउ यू लुक एट द प्रेजेंटेशन इन द फ्रंट एंड यू सी देयर इज समथिंग रेड रेड के अवे एक छोटी सी चीज को दीस थिंग्स आर कॉल्ड एलरॉन तो वी गो ऑन टू द नेक्स्ट स्लाइड अब इन एल एलरॉन्स का फंक्शन क्या होता है ये बेसिकली आपके प्लेन को ऐसे रोल करने में हेल्प So you see that in the uh, picture in the middle, you see that a one aileron is up. The left one, the picture, is that you can see one aileron is up. The right one, the aileron is down. So what happens is that this helps you to roll your plane. This is like a roll, right? So what we are going to do is we are going to draw a complex plane with our own plane. Let's just uh, um, let's draw a plane with our own plane. Let's just draw a plane with our own plane. Let's just draw a plane with our own plane. Let's just draw a plane with our own plane. इस पर आप यहाँ पर एक इधर कट और एक इधर कट लगा और एक इधर कट लगा दें और एक इधर इधर तो छोटे छोटे से कट लगा दें इतने लाइक हाफ सेंटीमीटर या एक सेंटीमीटर के कट्स लगा दें तो आई एम गोना मेक इट कुछ करेंगे दोनों की जो फ्लैप्स बनाए आप बराबर हो नाउ आई जस्ट शो यू हाउ आप इसको इस तरह टर्न करते हैं ठीक है। इट्स गोना लुक समथिंग लाइक वेल इज दिस लिंक टू एयर स्पेस ऑन वेट गाइस। अच्छा ये देखे तो नाउ यू सी समथिंग लाइक दिस इट्स विजिबल राइट My voice is not proper. You are audible, Mira. I am. All right. So quickly make this thing, but one thing to do is to make a circle. So, like you have seen in the middle, you will see where to put the cuts. Okay, this is how the cuts are made. This is like this. I have put one cut here and the other one cut here. And then I just turn this to be. I have made a thing and I have turned it. और यहाँ पे भी इसी तरह के दो कट्स बनाए उसको मैंने टर्न कर दिया अब मैं चाह रही हूँ कि आप लोग एक टर्न जिसका है ना वो ऊपर की तरफ कर दें और एक टर्न उसको नीचे की तरफ कर दें तो वी मेड अ वेरी ओन एल रॉन्ग हमारे घर में अब आप वेन यू फ्लाई दिस प्लेन अब ऑब्वियसली इट्स अ पेपर प्लेन तो आप इसको फ्यूचर बाद में कैरी ऑन कर दीजिएगा आप देख लें अभी एंड देन लेटर ऑन यू कैन कैरी तो अब आप जब इसको फ्लाई करेंगे ना नोटिस करें कि इट विल रोल और ये जो मैंने आपको साइट पर आपको कुछ पिक वो एक वीडियो नजर आ रही होंगी ये मेरी अपने ये मेरा हाथ है एंड ये मेरा प्लेन है एंड यू कैन सी देख लेफ्ट साइड और राइट साइड दोनों उसमें एक में राइट साइड रोटेशन हो रही है और एक में लेफ्ट साइड रोटेशन हो रही है इफ आई मेरा फ्लाई प्लेन राइट ना हो तो बहुत फास्ट फॉरवर्ड हो जाएगा तो स्लो मोशन में आप देख सकते हैं कि ऑपोजिट रोल्स हो रहे हैं क्यों हो रहे हैं एक दफ़ा में मैंने एलरॉन राइट साइड का एलरॉन ऊपर रखा है और लेफ्ट साइड का नीचे रखा है एक दफ़ा जब मैं प्लेन उड़ा रही थी तो वो राइट रोटेट कर गया और जब मैंने आ, अपने एलरॉन की डायरेक्शन चेंज किया यानी मैंने एलरॉन ये वाला नीचे कर दिया और ये वाला ऊपर कर दिया तो आई चेंज द डायरेक्शन ऑफ माई एलरॉन फिर मैंने उड़ाया तो मेरी आ, जो प्लेन की रोटेशन थी वो अगर पहले क्लॉक थी तो सेकेंड टाइम एंटी क्लॉक हो गई So I want you guys to try that, and then let me know, or you can guys, uh, you guys can let me know in the WhatsApp or whatever. It is rolling, right? It is, it is really right. So now I want you guys to always remember that this is what ailerons are. It works, right? <laughs> I'm glad. <laughs> it's working. No MG, it works. Oh, sometimes it just you know, it works. Oh. I'm so glad. So now you so, have to you know change the direction of your uh, aileron and it's going to work. And I have also uh, put up some demonstrations. I think my plane is having a stroke. So now I want you guys to guess what it's very self explanatory but just guess which field is this entire activity related to. So guys, do you guess? Yeah, definitely. Yeah, share it on WhatsApp group. No worries. We have this entire. We'll put it up entirely on YouTube. So, please do. It's rolling. Yeah. 
perfect aerospace. So you all guys know. You guys are right. Aerospace. So clap for your for yourselves and wonderful. Space engineering is wonderful. Well let's I'll just give it on to Aisha now and she's she'll carry on the next the next activity. I had a great time with you guys. Sure you're muted at the moment. Okay, can you hear me now? Yes, you are. Yes. Okay, so hey people, I'm back again. This time, I'm here to perform an activity along with you. Uh-huh, you guessed it right. We are heading towards make own Portal Bond launcher. So just grab the stuff listed here and we'll get started. You can have toilet paper rolls or even you can make your own tubes out of card sheets. All right. So I guess we should begin. Now, take a tube and cut it into half lengthwise. You can follow me. And as you can see, I'm cutting it half lengthwise. All right, now it's open. Can you see that? Now, what are we supposed to do is to reduce its diameter. We Because we want to insert it into the another tube. Alright? So, choose the first diameter, we have to reduce it a It will look something like this again. Alright? Now insert it into another tube and check if it's moving freely. What we did, we just cut one of our tubes into half lengthwise. Then we rolled it into a smaller diameter. Then we inserted it into another tube and we checked if it's moving freely. Okay, got it till now? Now, what we are supposed to do is to make holes at one end. All right, thanks for your answer. So, in order to make the holes, I would suggest you to mark it first. Just use a pencil to mark where you want to punch the holes. Make sure they are 180 degrees apart. Okay, one hole here and the other one exactly opposite. Yes, we are going to share it on WhatsApp. Okay, the inside roll, inside roll or outside, what do you mean? Roll लेके आपने उसका diameter कम करना है, उसे roll किया और उसके एक end पे आपको दो holes punch करने हैं. So for this, I would suggest कि आप एक pencil लें और यहाँ पे दो circles बना लें छोटे-छोटे opposite. एक circle इधर, एक उसके exactly opposite इधर. Can you please tell again? Okay, sure, sure. सबसे पहले हमने एक toilet paper tube लिया या फिर आपने एक card sheet से tube बनाया, ठीक है? Iska size or is size different on a chaye. Ek ka ek broad on a and the other one should have a smaller diameter. Tika, kyunke hum in dono ko ek se rakna chate, ek ko dusreke under dalna chate. Tika, 
तो इस वाले का साइज छोटा करने के लिए डायमीटर छोटा करने के लिए मैंने इसको रोल कर लिया है और छोटा कर दिया ठीक है नाउ आपने एक होल बनाया इधर ओके okay. आपने एक होल बनाया इधर और दूसरा उसके जस्ट अपोजिट 180 एट्टी डिग्री पे यहां पर राइट हियर यू कान यू कान लिसन मी तो दोबारा इसको खोला मैंने और ये रहे मेरे सारे मार्क्स जो मैंने इस पर लगाए थे ठीक है इसको एक पंच किया जहां जहां आपने मार्क्स लगाए थे उन सबको पंच कर लें या फिर किसी कंपास से या किसी पेंसिल से होल कर लें ठीक है वंस यू आर डन फिर से इसको फोल्ड करें आर यू डन अगर हो जाए तो मुझे एक सिग्नल दीजिएगा मूव फॉरवर्ड ओके दैट्स ग्रेट पीपल आर एक्चुअली फॉलोइंग मी और राइट दैट गिव्स अ ग्रेट फीलिंग यू नो Wow. Okay. So what we are going to do is to poke a pencil into the holes. Just grab a pencil, and it will require some effort, you know. Just poke it into the holes, like this. All right. It will look like a handle. Now use a tape, any tape, scotch tape, duct tape, whatever you have. Just use it to make it even more firm. Secure it using a tape, like this. And thus our inner handle is ready. Once you are done, just leave a comment. Okay, that's nice. Wow. Oh yes, I'm waiting. Don't worry. You can use even more tape to make it even more secure. Yes, I'm waiting here. Don't worry. Just tape it properly so it gets even more secure. Done. Okay, that's great. Let's move forward towards our outer barrel. Okay. So take another roll, and this time what you have to do is to cut two slits on one end, similarly one eighty degrees apart to each other. Have a look. I've cut one slit right here, like this. Can you see it? Now I'm going to cut another slit just opposite, right here, one eighty degrees apart. It will look something like this. Okay. Cut two slits and make flaps like this. Are you done? Oh, 
ओके लेट मी टेल यू अगेन आपने ये कार्डशीट का या फिर टॉयलेट पेपर का रोल लिया ठीक है उसके एक कॉर्नर पर आपने सिज़े की हेल्प से स्लिट्स बनाए दो कट्स लगाए और उसको फोल्ड कर लिया तो वो एक स्लिप जैसा एक फ्लैप जैसा बन गया ठीक है उसके बिल्कुल ऑपोजिट 180 डिग्री अपार्ट आपने यहाँ पे एक और फ्लैप बनाया दो और कट्स लगाए और उनको भी जरा सा फोल्ड किया तो एक और फ्लैप बन गया तो नाउ यू हैव योर आउटर बैरल हैविंग टू फ्लैप डन ओके दैट्स ग्रेट नाउ ग्रैब टू रबर बैंड and insert into this slit into these slits like this okay one rubber band here and the other one right here okay so this is how it's going to look can you see it here are the rubber bands all right that's nice that's nice I need to change this one. I don't like it. Okay. I'm sorry, but you you do the flat part again. Okay, no problem at all. We can do it again. Okay. आपके पास ये tube था, ठीक है? इसके एक corner पे आपने दो cuts लगाए using scissor और उनको जरा सा ऐसे करके bend किया, तो वो एक flat चेस बन गया ठीक है आफ्टर इंसर्टिंग द पेंसिल आपने दूसरा वाला रोल लिया दूसरा वाला रोल लिया ये फर्स्ट पार्ट हो गया सबका इनर पार्ट सबका डन है इनर पार्ट में समझ नहीं आया I guess you can follow the YouTube tutorial later. My first time भी थोड़ा कम है, so I'll just move on. Out of part के लिए आपने एक card sheet से roll बनाया है, या फिर आपने लिया है एक cotton roll, वो cotton ball का ले लें, या फिर tissue paper roll, ठीक है? उसके एक corner पे scissors से दो cuts लगाए और एक flap बन गया, ठीक है? Turn it around, दूसरे उसके बिल्कुल ऑपोजिट आपने यहाँ पे दो और कट्स लगाए और एक और स्लिट बन गया और उनको फ्लैप्स जैसा बना ठीक है यूज टू रबर बैंड्स और उसमें इंसर्ट कर दें इस तरह से हैंग कर दें इसके ऊपर लाइक दिस ठीक है इस तरह से ये बन जाएगा ठीक है अब यूजिंग अ टेप इसको सिक्योर करते हैं ताकि ये खराब ना हो यूज अ टेप एंड रैप इट लाइक दिस सिक्योर इट ओके अब ये और ज्यादा स्ट्रांग हो जाएगा एंड यू कैन प्ले विद इट फॉर अ लॉन्गर टाइम All right, our outer barrel is also ready. Now it's time to join the bow. Inner barrel ko outer barrel mein insert karte like this. Okay. Ye jo rubber band wala part hai, it's going to be on top. Or pencil wala part on the bottom, like this. Can you see it? Rubber bands are right here, and the pencil is right here. Okay. Is it done? All right, that's nice. I need more confirmations to proceed. आउटर बैरल बनाया है उसमें जो रबर बैंड्स हैं 
उस पार्ट को ऊपर की तरफ रखना है और इनर बैरल में जो पेंसिल वाला पार्ट है उसे नीचे रखना है और दोनों को ऐसे इंसर्ट कर लें छोटे वाले को अंदर बड़े वाले में इंसर्ट और राइट लेट्स प्रोसीड अहेड अब जो ऊपर वाले में ये रबर बैंड्स हैं इन रबर बैंड्स को स्ट्रेच करके पेंसिल तक ले आए और पेंसिल के अंदर के ऊपर हैंग कर दें लाइक दिस कैन यू सी दिस इज इट विजिबल ये पेंसिल के ऊपर आपने इस तरह से कर दिया और राइट वंस यू आर डन विद दिस Your launcher is going to be ready. Okay. Insert the smaller one and the larger one. Yes. जो larger diameter का था roll उसमें दो slits लगाए opposite sides पे और उसको फ्लैप्स को मोड़ के वहां पे इंसर्ट किए हैं हमने रबर बैंड्स और उन रबर बैंड्स को अब ड्रैग करके पेंसिल तक ले आएंगे नाउ जब खींच के इसको छोड़ेंगे इट्स गोइंग टू एक्ट लाइक अ लॉन्चर कैन यू सी इट इट्स वर्किंग ओके या आई नो इट्स असम It's working like this. All right. Now we can test it using a cotton ball or a tissue ball or whatever you have. You can use any projectile, any small thing which can just fit inside. You may use it. Okay. Okay, I guess a lot of people are doing it. Now let's test our launcher. How's it working? One, two, three. Where's it? Oh, <laughs> like this. Woo! Did you see that? Yes, it works. We actually made our own cotton launcher. Isn't it exciting? Ah, uh -huh, thank you. All right. I guess a lot of you has done it. So now let's just talk about a little bit of science behind this. What we actually did here is we used our hands. and we have the mechanical force here okay we generated a mechanical force using our hands we stretched this and we converted the mechanical force into elastic potential energy what's elastic potential energy it's an energy created due to the stretching of rubber bands okay mechanical energy ko humne convert kiya elastic potential energy इलास्टिक पोटेंशियल एनर्जी को जब हमने छोड़ा तो हमारी कॉटन बॉल यहाँ से निकल के स्पीड में गई तो इलास्टिक पोटेंशियल एनर्जी कन्वर्ट हो गई काइनेटिक एनर्जी में और राइट काइनेटिक एनर्जी इज रिलेटेड टू द मूविंग थिंग्स और राइट सो व्हाट वी डिड वी यूज मैकेनिकल एनर्जी इन आर हैंड्स एंड मसल्स टू स्ट्रेच इट एंड क्रिएटेड no not actually created energy can neither be created nor be destroyed we just transformed the mechanical energy from our hands into the elastic potential energy and then it gets converted into the mechanical energy all right so have fun with it now i have a little homework for you try changing the angle of projection and measure how far your cotton ball goes when you change the angle of launcher angle means Keep it like this at ninety degree, at sixty degree, at forty five degrees, thirty degrees, zero degrees. All right, try different angles and search. कि कौन से एंगल पे आपकी बॉल सबसे ज़्यादा आगे जाती है. Okay. When I tried, it was somewhere around forty five degree. But I want you to check whether I'm correct or not. So I hope you all enjoyed this activity. Now I would like to hand it over to Sania.
Okay. Hi everyone, I'm Sonia Mazhar and I'm sure you already guessed what Aisha's uh, project was. It was mechanical engineering and it's quite an interesting field. So now I'll move on to my uh, my activity. In this activity, you won't be actually needing anything. I'll be using a computer application, so you guys just need to observe me. So we'll be going towards Tinkercad. It's a software, so let me share my screen. And here we are. So I hope I guess I guess there's some technical issue at Sonia's side. Let's wait some minutes. I guess her internet isn't stable. Let's wait for a while. Okay, am I audible now? Am I audible? Yep, you are, Sonia. Am I visible and audible? You are audible, but you are not visible. All right, uh, since Sanya is uh, setting her network issues, we'll start with the next activity.
Sobia, you're muted. Sobia, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Okay, you were muted. Can you start it again? Can you guys hear me? Yep, you're audible. Yes, Alina, we can. Perfect. Um, so, hi guys, I'm Alina Amin Khwaja and I am a mechanical engineering student. And it is so great to meet you all. And I really love the enthusiasm so far. And it's just really, really exciting. So I will be taking you through two activities. Um, the first one is called London Bridge is Falling. So have any of you ever heard of the bridge in London? You know, the one that always keeps falling. Has anyone ever heard of it? Yeah, yeah, OK. Well, ever since there were bridges, people started making bridges, engineers and architects have tried to find new ways of making sure that they build structures that are strong enough to not collapse. So what is our challenge today? Basically, we'll be making a bridge that is strong enough to hold our toy car. Now, um, I would just want everyone to um, look at the screen and see the things that we will be needing for this activity. But before we get into it and before we start making it, let's talk a little bit about bridges. So since you know we've had bridges, um, the earliest bridges were made from mud. Um, they were made from uh, you know stone, but nowadays we have bridges that are made from concrete. We have bridges that are made from metal, and some are even made from glass. But it is not the material that is important when engineers and architects they try to decide how to make a bridge. What is more important is the structure. Why? Because that is what is going to give the bridge its strength. So today we will be making, like I said, a bridge. And I would want you all to, can you guys see the, um, the setup over here? Give me a thumbs up if you can. Yeah. Can you guys see it? Yeah, OK. Perfect, perfect. So. I want you guys to take two cups or plastic food containers, whatever you guys have, and put them at a very small distance. Not too small, but a small enough distance, like for example, for your hand enough hand to fit through. Right? And then I want you guys to place that on your table. And I will be using tape to keep it in place. You guys don't need to if you have you know, um, lunch boxes, if you're using those, if you're using food containers, those are good enough as well. So what do we do? We will take a light material like paper and try to modify it or change it in a way that it actually holds our toy car right here. OK, so we keep this piece of paper and it doesn't look too stable, you know, but and we'll try it out too. We keep the car and it falls down. It's not stable enough. So, you know, a bridge is more than just a road that lets people cross from one area to another, right? A good bridge has strength and a good bridge has structure. So what if we take the paper and fold it in half? Maybe that would give it structure. You know, let's try it. No, that fails too. So let's think about the real world, right? In the real world, we have some bridges that have arches underneath. 
some bridges that have cables that hold it up. But what to do if you just want the bridge itself to have a stable enough structure that it can hold not just one car, but a lot of cars going at the same time, right? So what do you do? You, um, okay, sorry. Does anyone say anything? Uh, someone saying you can't see me. Okay. Um, let me just stop. No, no, I can see a video, Alina. You're visible. Yep. You can see. There must okay, be some issue on the other side. Um. Okay. Can like the others? Okay. Yeah. Okay, maybe it's your internet issue. I'm very sorry, but we will be sending you guys recordings after this. So you guys can try it out on your own as well. All right? So, where were we? Real life. We're talking about the real life, right? Um, so, we were talking about how bridges, we can create bridges that have structure within themselves. So, have you ever heard about trusses? Has anyone ever heard about trusses before? Wait, okay, you guys are saying your paper is capable of holding your toy car. Can anyone just show me what paper you have and which size toy car you have? Because that shouldn't happen. Also, make sure that you have a good enough distance because what would a bridge be if not really, you know, closing the gap between two things? <laughs> Someone please send this on the WhatsApp group. I really want to see this. But overall, you if you have a good enough distance, and you have because what we're dealing with right now is a lightweight paper, right? And we're dealing with a small enough car. So like mine falls down. I don't know what magic you guys are doing. Yes, OK, somebody answered my question. Truss is a structure with triangle triangular arrangement. Very good. So what it basically is, you have triangles within it that makes it stable enough to let vehicles cross over, right? You have that not in just bridges, you have that in many other construction um, systems as well. So what do we do? We come up with another strategy because this holding one piece of paper and just a single piece of paper isn't working. And if we, you know, because um, these truss bridges, they all have walls and then they also have triangular structures. So if we were to take a piece of paper and fold it a bit from the corners so that we were to get um, walls. Can anyone see the walls? You guys see? Be able to tell what it is. Yeah? OK. So if you make it like this, just fold it from the corners, from both corners, that you have kind of walls, you know? Um, and then you keep that on top of your structure. Then let's see what happens. I keep my car. It is stable enough. It is the same width paper that I used before. I just built walls, but we can take this a step further. Now we were talking about trusses, right? So if we were to take our paper and fold it like you were, you know, to make a paper fan. I'm pretty sure everyone has made these before, hopefully. But these basically these are triangles that we're going to get when we um, fold the paper like this. So if I show this to you, it's going to have trusses almost. And then we're going to use that. If anyone wants me to slow down or repeat what I'm saying, let me know. Paper fans, yes, yeah, someone has made them. Very nice. OK, just give me, um, I'm going to just check in on you guys. Like, Give me a heads up or a, a, just a thumbs up um, if you guys are OK with what is happening so far. Also, some people have their hand raised. Do you guys want to say anything? You can, you can just OK, yes, following. Perfect. Awesome. So then we have this trust structure. We're going to take our toy car. And yeah, it is stable. But what is the problem with this? The problem with this is in normal real life situations, you can't really have your car going over triangles or trusses, right? You need a smooth road so that the car can actually travel across from one place to other, which to another, which is actually the purpose of the bridge, right? So 
Now what we're going to do is incorporate two of the designs that we saw. One is with the walls and one was with the trusses or the triangle. Then we're going to take another piece of paper and fold it like we did for the walls and then fold it once again. So then we have walls, but with triangles in them. Can anyone see? Can you guys tell what it is? Like triangle here, triangle here. Yeah, no. My video is stuck. Um, looks like Tobleron. There you go. Yes, it looks like Tobleron. Exactly. Uh, yeah, you fold the walls so that they become triangles. Exactly. Thank you. So then you put that. Let me just fix this one last time. And then we put our toy car and it works. It is stable enough. So it's the same thing that we used before. It's the same piece of paper. It is one paper, which is very lightweight. But because we used a different kind of structure to it, like we modified it a little bit, taking inspiration from real life, we were able to make a bridge, a makeshift bridge that is strong enough to hold our car. So why does one design work better than the others? That's because design changes do have an impact on load bearing stabilities of load bearing abilities of different kinds of structures. Now, what kind of structure that we discussed was just one, right? Um, before we move ahead, I want you guys to, you know, guess which uh, engineering field this was. Can anyone tell me like what we just explored, what that was? Yeah, OK, OK. You guys are spot on. This is this is really, really good. So what exactly are civil engineers? Right? Civil engineers think, design and then construct infrastructure projects and systems in the public and private sector. So basically they create um, dams, they create buildings, they create drones and like we did today, they create bridges that are stable enough to let many cars pass through or many vehicles pass through without having underneath anything underneath or above holding it together. So the reason why I told you guys that you need 100 coins is basically I want you guys to try out making bridges using paper. You guys can combine two different ideas and I want you guys to take a piece of paper or your notebook and make two columns like this. I hope you can see this is the design column where you draw a design or just make a description of your design. And then over here, you let me know what happens. So either you put a cross or you put a, um, a tick, letting me know if your design actually worked, if your design was strong enough to hold a bag of 100 coins. So this you guys can do later on, even if you guys weren't able to do this experiment right now, it's completely OK. Um, you can take your help, take the help of your parents or your siblings later on after the session is over and then, you know, come up with different ideas, different structures that you can have using paper only and using a small enough distance. I don't want any of that magic happening Cooper, with someone, someone's car staying afloat on just a single piece of paper. OK, I still want that video. But that was it for civil engineering, and we would really love to have your videos of your experiment too. Now we're going to move on to our second activity. And for this, I'm going to need a clean surface area, right? Um, so while I set up everything, can anyone tell me what a base is and what an asset is? I'm also going to wear my lab coat to make it look even more official. But yes, can anyone tell me what an asset is and what a base is? Chat box, unmute, whatever works for you guys. Uh-huh, anyone else? I'm pretty sure you guys have probably heard of the word even like, you know, maybe you studied about it in your science classes. Mm hmm. Yeah, yeah, you guys are good. 
Okay, so we're just gonna gather everything that we need so far. Um, this I this activity is called fizzy fun, and you actually are gonna have fun with this one. So um, here's what you need for this activity: a bottle, any plastic small bottle that you may have. Take off the cover. Um, can we have the list of requirements? The requirements on the screen. Yeah. Okay, perfect. So I really appreciate you guys letting me know what an acid and a base is. You guys are absolutely correct. Bases produce hydroxide when dissolved in water. Acid has the pH value below seven. Bases produce OH minus ions. Yes, we're going to work with some acid. Bases, bases on any substance that uh, is in water solution is slippery to the touch. Acids have high pH value. I, I know what's going to happen. OK, if you know what's going to happen, good enough. You guys can then you know just follow along without any ha instructions from me, and then maybe just upload the video even before I complete the experiment. But uh, an acid is basically a compound in which one of the elements is a hydrogen and acids are usually very corrosive, right? And the most common acid that you can find is hydrochloric acid, which is found in our stomachs. A base, on the other hand, is a compound which has either oxygen or oxygen and hydrogen within its molecule. And acids are bitter to taste and mostly are used in making soaps. So what are we going to do? Um, before we get on with the activity, I'm just going to show you what I have acid over here, vinegar, because it is an acid. If I pour some vinegar into my bowl, right, and yes, acids are neutralized by alkalis, and now I have some baking soda here. If I put a spoonful of it inside, now you guys might not be able to see what's going on, but I'm hoping you guys can hear what's going on. So if I put this in. Can you guys hear kind of what happened? Can you guys see what happened? Yeah, yeah, OK, OK, good. So fizzing, yes, exactly. So we heard fizzing, right? I could see bubbles. I don't know if you guys could see bubbles, but I still can see bubbles. What do you think that suggests? It's like ASMR. Yes, excellent. But what do you think fizziness and bubbles suggests? Like, what do you think happened right here? ASMR ke lava. A gas, yes. A reaction happened, which led to a gas being created. So what the experiment is that we're going to be performing is I want you guys to take your bottle. And um, everyone's good so far, right? You guys are following. You guys have the stuff ready. Do you guys need time to get everything or should I move ahead? Reaction produce. Yes, very good. Following. Yeah, I need some more responses so I can move ahead. You don't have a bit. You know what? It's OK, guys, if you don't have some of the things because you guys can do these apart you know, from the session to when the session is done, um, you guys will have plenty of time later on too. But those who can, those of you who have these things, the bottle, the vinegar, the baking soda, and the balloon, um, you know, feel free to join me and make this experiment. So we're going to pour in some vinegar into the bottle just a little bit so that we have enough for, you know, some gas. OK, so I filled it up to here, if you guys can see, like above. Yeah, and then I'm going to take a uh, take a balloon and put some baking soda into it. Right. Is everyone with me so far? Yeah, thumbs up. Perfect, perfect. OK, so I already have the baking soda in this. You guys can put a little bit, bit of baking soda into the balloon and have it so that when you like hold it like this, you guys have like a good, decent amount of baking soda inside. Now what you're going to do is then. Put the balloon. On top 
like this, and then flip it over and then see what happens. This is so cool. I got so excited the first time I did this. Oh my God. Yes, 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 I'll wait, I'll wait, I'll wait. I'll wait. I want you guys to like also do it and then show it to me as well. Yes, I see someone putting baking soda into their balloon. Yes, go for it. I know this is so cool. <laughs> yeah, yeah I'm, I'm waiting, I'm waiting. Some of you are way ahead of me because you guys haven't even explained what just happened in the reaction where I was going to go. Yeah, you're filling the vinegar. Yeah, OK, after you put in the vinegar into the bottle, what you do is you take your balloon, right? I have another balloon. You take your balloon and then you just put some baking powder, a baking soda into it, right? So I forgot to mention this, but baking soda is a base and the vinegar is an acid, which is why this reaction actually happened, which is why you saw this happening. So you just put um, baking soda into your balloon and then you put it on top of the mouth of your bottle and then you just flip it over so that the baking soda just falls inside with the vinegar. The acid vinegar base baking soda reacted to form CO2 which is which rises woohoo yes it's epic. <laughs> the balloon is blowing up because of the gas produced by the reaction you guys don't even need me. You guys don't even need this. Oh my God, you guys are way ahead. Wow. Uh, okay. So, is everyone done? Vinegar has acetic acid. Yes, very good. Is everyone done? Just give me a, a thumbs up so I can move ahead. Yeah, yeah, perfect. OK, so what basically happened right now is that, like you guys just said, the acid in the vinegar reacted with the base, which was the baking soda. So when the baking soda fell into the vinegar, gas was created because the reaction occurred, right? The reaction, can anyone name the reaction? Like, I mean, you guys already know, but like, I mean, just tell me what was the reaction. <laughs> this feels like shaking a 7-up bottle and then opening it, yes. OK, yes, chemical engineering. Very good, very good, yes. But I was talking about the reaction, which is a neutralization reaction or an acid-based reaction. But you guys, you guys are the that field is wow, love it, love it. But basically, this is what happens. This is the reaction that happens. And what chemical engineers do is basically they try to um, you know, play around with different reactions to produce the best results that can be used in different products that aid society and chemical engineering has just a whole different base of like what specialized fields you can go into as well now on the um screen you guys will be able to see i just want to um you know kind of show off the other experiment that i also made before this this is just so cool i love this um, but please share your videos as well. I want to see pictures, videos, whatever, right? Um, okay, getting back to what we have on the screen. We can see the chemical equation, which is sodium uh, vinegar plus sodium bicarbonate, which is also known as baking soda. What it gave us is sodium acetate, which is a salt, water, and gas, carbon dioxide. Can anyone here? You guys are all smarties, so I'm pretty sure some of you know but can anyone here tell me what is the chemical um, formula for vinegar? Anyone? 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 And no Googling, okay? Nobody Googles this. <laughs> yes, okay. I, I was asking what is the chemical formula for vinegar? Excellent, you guys. Yes, okay. A lot of people know. Perfect. Um, and can anyone tell me what is the chemical formula for sodium bicarbonate? Yeah. Sodium bicarbonate. Any oh, wow. Okay. I see people coming in. This is awesome. I wish I could like take all of your names, but you guys are just like commenting so fast. I really can't. Also, I got too excited. <laughs> but yes, this is really good. 
Um, so basically, you take C2H4O2 and sodium bicarbonate, which is NaHCO3, to get sodium acetate. Now, does anyone know the formula for sodium acetate? Anyone? Sodium acetate, the salt that was made. No, you guys don't know. Okay, somebody, somebody said it. Yes. Yes, excellent. So it's CH3, CO, and A. So it's a combination of the acid and the base, which created a salt. And then you have water, which is obviously H2O and CO2. Carbon dioxide, which is the gas that we exhale or we breathe out every time we exhale. Now, building from this um, experiment that we just did, I have another experiment for you guys to follow. I just want like follow ups for every field right now. But um, I have sent you guys the link in the chat box. I'll also send this link on the WhatsApp group. But this is basically a follow up from what we did right now. So instead of just using this setup, we use this setup, but for a bigger project, right? So you have kind of like a rocket launcher thingy so that whenever you mix the two ingredients, vinegar and baking soda, you have a rocket that just, you know, goes into the air. Um, your balloon flew flew away. <laughs> that was so funny. Okay, but um, I had fun. I hope you guys had fun too. This was very very cool for me. I I it was like I was a kid all over again. Um, <laughs> your balloon popped. It's okay. It's okay. You guys can do this again. But you guys were awesome. I mean, honestly, you guys were just way ahead of me. And you guys guessed everything correctly. I'm so proud of you guys. Um, and then I will pass this on to the next person. Yeah, Salaikum. And I'm sorry for the issues that I had earlier. I will be not opening my video because that was the issue. But I'll share my screen now. Uh, can you unshare your screen, Sylvia? Okay, so I'll share. Hopefully this will go well. And I'm sharing my screen. Can I get a confirmation that my screen is shared? Yes, it is. Okay, so uh, you guys already read the title. It was Burglar Alarm. So like I explained earlier, we have Tinkercad. It's a software. Uh, which will be an application, actually, not exactly a software. It's an application that runs simulations. Now, what exactly is simulations? So a simulation is uh, a method to conduct actual real life events in a computer screen. OK, so if we want to see how a car, rea uh, how car uh, gets destroyed when it hits a pole, we don't actually want to destroy a car, so we will run a simulation which will have all the details of the car and then it'll come on the screen of how it is going to be reacting. Okay, so here I'll be making a burglar alarm. So I'm running a simulation. The reason for that is that actual components would be quite hard for you guys to acquire and for me to uh, show. So I'll just go with a simple uh, burglar alarm. So what this burglar alarm is supposed to do, it is supposed to actually uh, sense movement, okay, in an area. For example, I'm putting my uh, burglar alarm in a specific area, and it's supposed to sense the movement if someone enters or moves in that same area. And how is it supposed to show? It's supposed to run a buzzer or show through an LED, okay? So how are we going to, uh, figure out the components. If it's supposed to buzz, then I should add a buzzer. So over here in the search pad, I'll write buzzer, and this is my buzzer, and I'll add it here. And to light up the thing, uh, to run an alarm light, so I'll add an LED. So over here is my LED, okay? But, uh, I'm not sure if you guys know or not, but in LEDs, you usually need a resistor. 
So I'll be adding a resistor as well. Now this is our output. Our output would be shown over here in form of a buzzer and an LED. But how are we going to actually sense this, uh, the changes or the movement in our environment? So for that, we're going to use a sensor. Okay, and over here, we have a PIR sensor. This sensor will actually sense any movement in the surrounding environment. Now, over here, what we've done, we have an output and we have an input. But how are we going to link both of them? To link both of them, we're going to use a very famous board, which is called an Arduino board. OK, an Arduino board, maybe most of you know it. So let me know if you guys know what, what is an Arduino board. OK, so over here on this Arduino board, we're going to connect wires so that we can make a proper connection between the input and the output. How are we going to make these connections? I'm not going to go into the details of that. I'll make it according to my manual, how it is in my manual. OK, so because you guys don't need to go into the detail, you just need to see how it works. OK, so I'll connect it. I'll make a connection and I'll share you with you guys the name of this link uh, so that you guys can play with a lot of circuits yourself as well. And I'll connect this to pin 13. And connect this as well to pin 13. Okay, this one to the ground. Okay. Change the color so that it's visible. Okay, and I'll also make the connections for the piece of electric over here. And I'll make the wires a bit messy because the actual wires are quite messy. So I won't go towards the prettiness. Okay, and I'll connect this over here to the power and over here to the ground. Okay, so what I did here is connect everything to a microprocessor called Arduino. Arduino is a microprocessor board. It actually uh, is a programmable board. You add programs. So what exactly is programs? Programs are actually instructions, a set of instructions that are used Okay, to actually uh, make something do or react. So if I were to give you an instruction, I would either give it to you in English or Urdu, right? So what uh, instructions does do these components give are actually in terms of programming languages. So there's C++, C, and etc. So over here, there's a coding option. And I'll go to the text option, continue. Now I'll delete the already set code over here and write another code. And for that, I'll go to my previous code. Control C. And right here. Okay. I already have the code over here, so I'll start the simulation and let it load. And I connected it here. Let me just move my here. This is the same circuit. And if I would do this, you can see over here that these are that. Uh, my audio is not shared, so you might not hear it actually. But it's actually making a sound and the bulb is lighting up. Okay. So this is a burglar alarm. You can add it anywhere in your room and it will light up. And it's all programmable. Uh, yeah. I'm sorry, I said not coming. Oh, okay. Great. Okay, so this is what majorly I was talking about. So let me present slides over here. Okay. So we went to Tinkercat and we saw something quite interesting, which is a little burglar alarm. Now I'm sure you guys can all guess the feel. 
And yes, it is electrical engineering. You might be surprised that we're using programming and electrical engineering, but this is the thing that electrical engineering is a very vast field which has multiple aspects of other engineering fields as well. We as electrical engineers have studied parts of mechanical as well as computers, and it's a huge and vast field and a very interesting field as well. So moving on, I'll go to our next thing. So this one is a bit more fun. It's like behind the screen. So in this activity, it's something that you guys could do as well. So behind the scene is the snake game. Okay, so I'll go towards the snake game. You guys give me a confirmation that you can see my screen because I'm not exactly connected to the chat. So I can't exactly know. So Aisha or Sylvia, can you give me an confirmation? Yeah, great. Okay, so here I press play and let's play this game for a while. Oops. Let's play again. So if you notice over here that whenever it eats a fruit, it actually grows in its land. I'm horrible at playing it, so forgive me. And I can't see the second fruit probably because of a notification. So uh, what I want you guys to do is on your Google for a second and write snake game online. Okay, you get this game and try it once. Okay, and tell me how many fruits have you guys gotten? So I'll go back to the meeting room and I want to see exactly how many fruits can you catch? You guys have played it, great. Great, it's a snake game. A uh, snake game, you just write a snake game online and you'll find it there on Google. So try it at once. I wanna see how you guys play it. Okay, and tell, oh, 25, are you sure? Oh my God, great. I am very horrible at that game and you guys actually witnessed it. Oh God. So try it again. Uh, Others try it too. Five. Are you still better than me? 27. Oh no, Maya, are you sure? Samara, 150. Oh God. How long was your snake? Nine, two, 12, 10. Oh God. Four, nine, 30. Great. So, have you guys ever wondered how this game actually works? Like, what is at the back end? or behind the curtains, how does it actually work? So what actually happens is something that I'll show you right now. So let me move to this software over here. Okay, this software is what I mentioned earlier about programming. This is what the software is about, okay? You program on this software screen, okay? So here I have a set of program written as a lot of lines of a single program and the language over here is C++. Okay, this is one of uh, the most easy and common languages that are used. And in this code all over here, it's actually uh, the whole game. This is the game, okay? So it might sound quite bizarre that how is this the game, but yeah, these number of lines are the game. So how I will actually show it to you it won't be as pretty as the game on the, uh, just a second. It's let it load a bit. So it won't be as pretty as it's shown in Google, but it will be something similar. Okay, so I'll start and here it is. So this F over here is the fruit. This circle over here is the snake. These hashtags on the side are the walls, okay? I told you it wasn't pretty, so it isn't pretty, but it's something that is actually there. So I'll use my keys, okay, to actually move about and catch one, and it's really hard. But the thing, because it's so hard and it's moving too fast, so I have done this, that I did not do the game over thing, because then I will have no scores. So you can see my score here on the corner, score 10. 
So it actually gives me 10 marks on every score. Now it's score 20. And my snake is actually getting bigger. There are three lines. Okay, so I'll just exit for now. So this might be cool, and I think it's cool. So let me see what's your answers. Oh, just a sec. Let me get back here and let me see. This is cool, great. Software engineering, yes, yes, it's software engineering. And this is what software engineers do. We make games, okay? So this is how interesting this Uh, wait, now I'll unshare my screen so that Sylvia can carry on. So it was great with, uh, being with you guys. Okay. Yeah, I had a temporary issue. Yes, it takes a lot of effort to make games. A lot of effort. It takes around 200 to 300 lines to make a very simple game. And you saw it wasn't pretty. So it was 150 lines code and it wasn't pretty. Yeah, it's pretty cool. Okay, so we can take forward. Hello guys, I hope you guys perform activity when you are in. We are going to show you a video of some prominent Pakistan women in STEM and then the students who are working in STEM field. Let's have a look. I hope you all are fine and doing great. This is Mahnoor Mahmood and I am doing electrical engineering from PNEC NUS. I'm a part of the NUS Airbox for almost like one year. The NUS Airbox is Pakistan's foremost UAV manufacturing student team that take part in international competition and has won IMACI US Challenge. In NUS Airbox, I'm a part of two different departments that is marketing and communication department and software department. In software department, we're responsible to develop and train machine learning models to improve UAV flights by using onboard computers and data from ground control station. And in marketing and communication department, we are responsible to arrange different campaigns, different webinars, and to get sponsors for the team. Assalamu alaikum. My name is Manal Anjum, and I've been a member of Formula Electric Racing NUS since October 2019. Bird is the first Formula student team from Pakistan to design and manufacture a Formula electric vehicle. My role as a technical member of the team involves working around safety and control circuits, mainly the low voltage system of the vehicle. Recently, the team was able to achieve third position in the engineering design event of Formula Student UK 2021. Bird has not only given me a platform to showcase my technical abilities, but has also helped me in gaining the necessary confidence to start believing in myself. Hey 
meeting. I'm Jayashree Ashwood, a member of the business team and the board of directors of NAST Rocket Team. A team is from Pakistan Navy Engineering College, NAST. We are the first ever undergraduate student team to be aiming for space in Pakistan. We are researching on and making rockets to represent a nation on an international level while working keenly to induce space knowledge and culture in Pakistan's youth through various STEM outreach programs. This year, we successfully participated in Space Code America Cup, where our video was markedly applauded by all the judges. And to integrate government into sparking the space sector acceleration, we even had a meeting with Mr. Fawad Chaudhary regarding space laws and legislature of our country. Bishop Black. Hi, I am Atika Khan, currently pursuing Bachelor's in Mechanical Engineering at NAST PNEC. I am a technical member at NAST Formula student team in the Vehicle Dynamics Department. NFST is the pioneer of Formula student culture in Pakistan and has secured first position in the Asian Regional Rankings in 2019. Recently, the team participated in the concept class category of FSUK 2021 and has achieved a remarkable third position in the engineering design event and an overall 15th position among a total of 65 teams. As a member of the steering department in NFST, my task is to design, manufacture, and assemble the steering system of our vehicle. Now, moving to our next session, which is a quiz. On the basis of which you will be graded, you can find the link for quiz in chat box. Be ready for quiz. Are you all ready for the quiz? Kindly thumbs up or write something yes or so that I can know. Okay, so you have 10 minutes. Hurry up. Remember, you'll be graded on the basis of this quiz. The link has been shared in the chat box. student who has submitted the quiz the earliest as well as getting the highest score he will be or she will be the winner and the winners will gather amazing gifts from campers My team is working on it. Kindly wait for a minute.
Malaika, after validating URL, it is going to open the form. Try again. We have shared the link in the WhatsApp group. Try to access it from there. I'm repeating that we have shared the form in the WhatsApp group. Try to access it from there. And once you are done, write done in the comment box. You have 10 minutes to complete the quiz, so hurry up. I'm really sorry, but once you have submitted, you cannot resubmit because we will consider only your first attempt. Moha is done. Excellent, Moha. Anya, we have shared the link in the WhatsApp group. Have you tried to access it from there? Urshia, we have a question after session after that. Then you can leave. And few announcement as well.
Damia has completed the quiz. Hurry up, guys. We have actually received 40 responses. Wow, you people are wonderful. Sarah, we have shared the link in the WhatsApp group. Alham, Amon, Don, that's great. Hurry up, people. The clock is ticking away. Hurry up, hurry up. Guess what has also done? That's amazing. And I have tried to connect personally with any of the members from the admin. They will share the link with you. Just a couple of minutes left. Hurry up.
113 responses oh my god that's great i guess most of them are done so should we proceed So finally, we are reaching towards the end of our session, but before bidding goodbye to my wonderful audience, I would like to request all of you to follow us on social media accounts, such as Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn, YouTube. You can find the links of the account in the chat box. I request all of you to follow WIE and WEP on Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn, and YouTube. Well, thank you all of you for having us today. I hope you all enjoyed the session very well. To tell us about your feedback, we have shared a feedback form or we are going to share a feedback form in the chat box. Kindly fill out the form and tell us about your experience. I'm giving you five minutes for filling out the form. Once you have done, kindly write down in the chat box. Tell us about your experience. You know, it's going to be really helpful for us to improve and to bring more engaging sessions for you in future. So just help us by filling it. We have shared the feedback form link. Request the admin to kindly share it on what the WhatsApp group. Quickly fill out the form and let us know about your experience.
Yes, everyone will get a participation certificate. And the winners of the quiz will get the gift campers too. We'll make all the necessary announcements after you have completed filling the forms. So just a little more wait. We are glad to have you all. People are saying the quiz was very hard. <laughs> what do you want to say about it? Well, Jasri answered it really well. Difficulties are like ladder or something. So you cross them and you move up, right? That's absolutely right, Jasri. Engineering and STEM is all about critical thinking and logical thinking. Agreed. These complex questions basically improve your skills. So you all must have filled the feedback forms. Now, if you have any questions regarding this session or the engineering field or related to anything, you can just type them in the chat box and we'll be happy to answer. The winners will be announced within a week, inshallah. Is this scope for engineering in Pakistan, considering that most unemployed engineers are found here? Okay. Who is this? Alham. All right. So, yes, we do have a scope of engineering in Pakistan, but it depends which kind of engineering have you choose. Like it depends on your field. I mean, you know, there are things that are not in Pakistan. There are many fields that are not in Pakistan. So, their jobs would be very difficult to find. So try choosing something which has scope here and You'll get a job, inshallah. I'd like to add in the try to get into fields that are more generalized so that you can go into specifics later on when you have a clear idea of what's going on, right? So yes. any field that's more in general. Malaika asked, what subject should we take if we want to go towards software engineering? So after that, I would say get yourself familiarized with different coding languages like Python, C++, C Sharp, Java, JavaScript. There are many languages. So you can do some courses on that. 
Okay, well, so Huda is asking which field is most popular in Pakistan? Uh, all right, so we have basic fields like electrical, mechanical, computer, civil, aeronautical, yeah, somehow. So these fields have a scope in Pakistan. If you don't have any question, you may leave. Okay, someone else also asked regarding the subjects. So for engineering, it's uh, for your pre-engineering uh, courses, you just need math and chemistry and physics, but uh, you don't need specific subjects for each specific engineering. It's quite general, actually. Even if you're going towards computers, it's not necessary to take computers in your inter level or in your A levels. Okay, so you can just take the normal three pre-engineering subjects and on the side for your own help, you can take on courses on uh, platforms like Coursera, etc. and use those to enhance your skills. Okay, I missed a part. Huda is also asked, what is the scope of girls in engineering? Okay, so to answer this, uh, Huda, as you know, we are moving towards digital digitalization, right? Right now, we are having a meeting with uh, around 150 plus people sitting in our homes comfortably, and you all are attending it, right? So, isi tarah se hamara sara kam bhi jo hai na, wo computer pe aur softwares pe aata ja raha hai. So, girls can easily come to engineering and work from their home, sitting in their homes right away. Okay. I'm currently doing an internship, a virtual internship. Kuch nahi karna hota mujhe apne bed pe aaram se laptop leke baithti hu aur uske andar bahut kuch karna hota hai. That's something different. But I don't have to go there. Mujhe raaste mein jo hurdles face karni padti hai insaan ko, wo saari cheeze nahi face karni padti. I just sit at home and work from home. Okay? So bahut kuch digitalize hota ja raha hai aur ladkiyan aaram se is taraf aa sakti hain. You can sit in your home and do whatever you like. So it's not an issue now. Emran asked, what will the winner of quiz get? <laughs> it's a surprise. Well, we will get Yeah. <laughs> a gift hamper will be given to all the winners. It's a surprise. We cannot disclose it. I'm sorry. It will ruin the fun, right? Yes. The winners will tell you what they get. <laughs> I have a Coursera account that's really bad in my rock. Okay, for those who don't have any question, they can leave. Oh, oh wait, I wait, let me just make some announcements. Uh huh. So, uh, first of all, um, 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 the e certificates, yeah. So the e-certificates of participation will be emailed to all the participants within a week or two. Also, we'll announce our winners for the Outlook IQ quiz after a couple of weeks and that too on our social media pages. So don't forget to follow us on social media to get to know the winners of today's session. And, and, and we also have gift hampers for the winners, which you might know. So they will be dispatched till the end of September. So you have to stay tuned till then. And uh, now it's time to sign off. So I would like to thank you all for joining us, for taking our time. And you know what? You all are really cool. You are literally smart kids. <laughs> you have you amazed me. Uh -huh, yes, I'm amazed, you know? And I'm damn sure you're gonna rock in future, okay? <laughs> so keep working hard and wishing you all a very successful future take care allah hafiz allah hafiz everyone allah hafiz everybody and good luck Bye. for the future yes and good luck bye
We are glad to brought that you had a great time. I love this. Yuna said that you are so awesome teachers. You are too. Goodbye.